Pryor has seven and a half hours of abject terror, and then about five minutes of a kind of gratitude for every breath he's, he's got left. It, it, it does feel like um, going on a march every night. It feels like we're, 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 on, we're, on, we're, we're on a march every night for eight and a half hours or seven and a half hours. Um, so even though it's, it's very costly for us and for an audience, I think it's, it's one of those things that's very worthwhile to do because um, I, I think if, if, if we weren't doing this, we would be struggling to find something that was as meaningful to do as performers. And if, and if we couldn't find that, we would be going on marches. That, it does feel like that, that, that is it's, it's, it's the time to march. I told you, he's like Oprah. He said, people are weeping at the end. <laughs> you ask him about this play, and people, they want to give him a golden globe. <laughs> they want to, people are bringing their sick children to be healed by Andrew. It's unbelievable. Not even Tony Kushner is this eloquent about this play. The great work begins. Are you one of those follow me to the other side voices? But, and then you, you know, you have to figure out, like I've been finding now coming back to it, you have to figure out when to eat beforehand because if you don't eat at the right time, like in the middle of the show the other, on Saturday night, I got, I was, I was lightheaded. I was like Judy Garland, where am I? Yeah. I, was, I sing for me. You know, it was like, you know, I was like, what, who are you? What's happening? I need, I gotta lie down. I, why can't I stop talking? Um, you know, it's, it's crazy. You, you think it's like an athletic event and you really have to make sure you have a power bar, <laughs> you know, an oxygen tank, because, you know. I am love. Yeah, honestly, I'm, you know, literally, I was, I was delirious. It just undoes you, this play, completely. And like Andrew, I think we have a similar, we're devastated, and then you have a couple of scenes where you get your strengths back. And I've just done Millennium three times in a row, and by the end of the show last night, I was paranoid, needy, like a little bit, uh, and you think, it's because I don't get to finish, you know? But when I do the full show, I leave feeling quite, oh, okay, because you get the ending. And I read, there's this brilliant book that's been written about the history of Angels in America, and every one of the actresses said the same thing, and that the night flight speech was the payoff for having gone through breaking your heart through the whole thing, and then you get hope at the end. And it's a play about change. That's what the play's about, is the power of change and how difficult change is. And, there's, and you look over the past 25 years, and you see how much has changed and how much plays like this contributed to that change. And the heat of the play is different as well. When the play was first done 25 years ago, people were dying in the audience, you know? And the, so the immediacy of the play was about the crisis of, of AIDS. Whereas now there's, the heat is political, you know? That is what everyone's talking about. It. And the, it brings in such a wide range of people. Ultimately, we, we're all going through our own personal tortures, and and we're and now also the the political environment is 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 atrocious, and and yet we have each other, we can rely on each other, and we can listen and talk to each other if we really want to, and that that's the only way we can, as the play says, move forward.